Gaius Julius Caesar was born on July 12, 100 BC. His father, also Gaius Julius Caesar, was a praetor who ruled the province of Asia and his mother, Aurelia Cotta, was of noble origin. Both held to the popular ideology of Roma, which favored democratization of government and more rights for the lower class, as opposed to the optimate faction's claim to the superiority of the nobility and Roman tradition. Values that favored the upper classes. It should be understood that Optimate and Populaire were not political parties in conflict with each other, but rather political ideologies to which many people moved, regardless of class in society. The concept of appealing to the people for support, rather than seeking approval from the Roman Senate or the other patricians, would work well for Caesar until the day of his death, but it didn't stop there. My name is Francisca and welcome to the Myths and Curiosities channel. Enjoy and leave your thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you don't miss any notifications. When Julio Caesar was 16 years old, his father died and Caesar became the head of the family. From that moment, and thinking of having the greatest benefit for the family, he decided that belonging to the priesthood was the best. He managed to appoint himself as the new high priest of Jupiter. As a priest not only had to be of patrician origin, but married to a patrician, Caesar broke off his engagement to a commoner and married the patrician, Cornelia, daughter of a high-profile and influential member of the popular, Lucius Cinna. When the Roman ruler Sulla declared himself dictator, he began a systematic purge of his enemies and particularly those who espoused the popular ideology. Caesar was shot and fled Rome, but his sentence was suspended through the intercession of his mother's family. Still, he was stripped of his position as a priest and his wife's dowry was confiscated. Left with no means to support himself or his family, Caesar joined the army. He proved to be an effective soldier, even being awarded the civic crown for saving a life in battle, and was promoted to the staff of Bithynia's military legacy to secure a fleet of ships. In this, as in his time as a soldier, Caesar was successful, and when Sulla died, he decided to return to Rome and try his hand at an orator, a modern lawyer. In this, too, he proved successful and became known as an eloquent orator. Point 70, 6 and 75 BC, while sailing to Greece, Caesar was kidnapped by pirates and held hostage. In keeping with the high opinion he had of himself, it is said that when the pirates told him he would be ransomed for 20 talents, Caesar claimed he was worth at least 50. While he was held captive by them, Caesar was treated well and consistently maintained a friendly relationship with the pirates. He is said to have repeatedly told them that upon their release he would hunt them down and crucify them for the affront to their family and personal dignity and this threat the pirates took as a joke. Upon his release, however, Caesar carried out this threat. He slit the pirates' throats before the crucifixion, however, in a show of mercy due to their easy treatment of him in captivity. This determination of Caesar's, to do exactly what he said he would do, became one of his defining characteristics throughout his life. Back in Rome, Caesar was elected military tribune and, after his wife Cornelia had died, he married Pompey, a wealthy optimate granddaughter of Emperor Sulla. Rising now into prominence in Rome, Caesar had enough prestige to support Gnaeus Pompeius, later known as Pompey the Great, for a general post. During this time, he also became friends with the richest man in Rome, Marcus Licinius Crassus. Crassus, it is believed, helped finance Caesar's candidacy for election to the office of high priest, Pontifex Maximus, which he won in 63 BC. In 62 he was elected praetor, divorced Pompey after a scandal in which she became involved with another man and left for Spain in 61 as, governor, of Hispania. In Spain, Caesar defeated rival tribes at war, brought stability to the region, and won the personal loyalty of his troops through his skill on the battlefield. He was awarded a consulate by the Senate. Returning to Rome with great honors, Caesar entered into a political-slash-business agreement with Pompey and Crassus in 60 BC, dubbed the first triumvirate by modern scholars and historians, although no one in ancient Rome used that term. Caesar married Calpurnia, the daughter of a wealthy and powerful senator Populaire, and married his daughter Julia to Pompey to further consolidate their arrangements. The three men together then effectively ruled Rome, Caesar, as consul, pushing measures favored by Pompey or Crassus in the Senate. Caesar proposed legislation for government reform, upbuilding on optimate sentiment and a redistribution of land to the poor, both long-standing popular goals. 
His initiatives were supported by Crassus Wealth and Pompey's soldiers, solidly aligning the First Triumvirate with the popular faction. As long as Caesar was a civil servant, he was safe from prosecution by his optimate enemies for his legal indiscretions, but once his consulship ended, he would surely be indicted. Furthermore, Caesar was deeply indebted, both financially and politically, to Crassus, and needed to raise money and his prestige. Recognizing the wealth to be gained through conquest, Caesar left Rome with his legions for Gaul in 58 BC. He defeated the tribes there, just as he had done in Spain, and secured the borders of the provinces. When the Germanic tribes seemed to threaten to invade, Caesar built a bridge across the river Rhine, marched his legions in a show of force, then marched back and dismantled the bridge. The Germans got the message and never invaded. He defeated the northern tribes and twice invaded Britain, Rome's first incursion into the British Isles. At the Battle of Elysia in 52 BC, Caesar defeated the Gallic leader Vercingetorix and completed the conquest of Gaul. He was now effectively the ruler of the province of Gaul, with all associated wealth at his disposal. Back in Rome, however, the first triumvirate disintegrated. Crassus was killed in battle against the Parthians in 54 BC, and in that same year Julia died in childbirth. Without Caesar's daughter and her financial and political support tying him to Pompey, the latter aligned himself with the Optimate faction in Rome, which he had long favored. Pompey was now the only military and political power in Rome, and he had the Senate declare Caesar's rule in Gaul terminated, and furthermore, ordered him to return to Rome as a private citizen. That would mean Caesar could be prosecuted for his actions when he was consul. Instead of returning to Rome as ordered, Caesar crossed the Rubicon River with his legions and marched on the city in 49 BC. This was considered an act of war, as the Rubicon was the border between the province of Gaul and Rome. Pompey, rather than face Caesar's legions in battle, fled to Spain and then Greece, where he was defeated by Caesar's much smaller force at the Battle of Pharsalus in 48 BC. Pompey himself escaped the battle and went to Egypt, where he hoped to find friends, but news of Caesar's great victory reached Egypt before him, and the Egyptians, believing that the gods favored Caesar over Pompey, slew Pompey, as soon as he did. Stepped on the beach. Caesar traveled to Egypt not only to pursue Pompey, who was already dead by this time, but to collect a sum of money that Egypt had owed the Roman treasury since the reign of Cleopatra's father. Contrary to the expectations of Ptolemy XIII's supporters, Caesar did not take sides in the dispute for the Egyptian throne. He demanded that Ptolemy XIII and Cleopatra come forward in order to mediate the dispute between the two brothers. When Caesar arrived in Egypt, Cleopatra was still in Syria. Entering the palace in Alexandria would be no easy task for her, as her brother's supporters controlled all access. To enter without being seen, Cleopatra hid in a rug that a subordinate took to the palace. The rug was rolled out before Caesar, revealing the presence of the Egyptian queen. Caesar and Cleopatra not only discussed politics, they spent the night together. Caesar deposed the co-ruler, Ptolemy XIII, and sided with Cleopatra, starting the war between Caesar's legions and the Egyptians. With the army besieged in the palace by the Egyptians, Caesar and Cleopatra held out for six months until reinforcements arrived in March 47 BC. And the Egyptian army was defeated. Caesar and Cleopatra appeared to have become lovers soon after meeting, perhaps that very night, and he remained in Egypt with her for nine months. Historian Suetonius writes that he often feasted with Cleopatra until dawn and would have crossed Egypt with her in his royal barge almost as far as Ethiopia if her soldiers had not threatened a mutiny. In 47 BC, Cleopatra gave birth to a son, Ptolemy Caesar, known as Caesar Ion, and proclaimed him her heir and successor to the throne. At this time, Pharnaces' son of Mithridates fomented rebellion in the east and Caesar rose to crush him. Leaving Cleopatra as ruler in Egypt, Caesar led his legions through Asia Minor, defeating the tribes and subjugating the people there, and then turned his attention to his enemies in Rome. At the Battle of Thapsus, near modern Tunisia, Caesar's legions defeated the forces of the Optimate faction in 46 BC, and in July of that year, he returned to Rome triumphant. In Egypt, Cleopatra expected Caesar to recognize and legitimize Caesar Ion as his son and heir. Caesar, however, never did, and named his great-nephew, Gaius Octavius Thurinus, Octavian, heir. 
Caesar, however, brought his son Cleopatra and her entourage to Rome and settled them comfortably in a house that he visited frequently, despite already being married to Calpurnia. Although the Senate seemed outraged by this indiscretion, since the bigamy laws in Rome were strictly enforced, Caesar was given the title of dictator perpetual, dictator for life, in 44 BC. Contrary to popular belief, he never held the title of emperor. He initiated many reforms, including more land redistribution among the poor, land reform for veterans that eliminated the need to displace other citizens, as well as political reforms that proved unpopular in the Senate. He ruled without regard to the Senate, simply telling them what laws he wanted passed, in an effort to consolidate and increase his own personal power. He reformed the calendar, created a police force, ordered the reconstruction of Carthage, and abolished the tax system, among many other legislative acts, some of which were long-standing goals of the popular. His time as dictator is generally considered prosperous for Rome, but senators, and especially those among the optimate faction, feared that he was becoming too powerful and could soon abolish the Senate entirely to rule absolutely like a king. On March 15, 44 BC, Caesar was assassinated by senators in the portico of the Basilica of Pompey the Great. Among the assassins were Marcus Junius Brutus, Caesar's second choice as heir, and Gaius Cassius Longinus, along with many others. He was stabbed 23 times and died at the base of Pompey's statue. The assassins, however, made the mistake of failing to plan what they would do after Caesar's death, and in doing so, they mistakenly allowed Mark Antony, Mark Antony, Caesar's cousin and right-hand man, to live. Mark Antony turned the tide of Roman popular opinion against the conspirators and, allied with Octavian, defeated the forces of Brutus and Cassius at the Battle of Philippi in 42 BC. Mark Antony later allied with Cleopatra VII of Egypt after the victory and, Octavian thought, posed a substantial threat to Rome. Over time, the former allies went to war and met in the final battle. Cleopatra and Antony's forces were defeated by Octavian at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. Cleopatra and Mark Antony killed each other a year later. After their deaths, Octavian ordered that Cleopatra's son Caesarion be murdered. After Octavian had consolidated his power as the first emperor of Rome, he deified Caesar and, as his adopted heir, proclaimed himself the son of God and took the name Caesar Augustus, emperor. In doing so, he ushered in the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. Tell the truth? Did you know Julius Caesar? It's an amazing story, isn't it? Tell me what you think. Thanks for his company, and remember to leave your thumbs up, share our content, and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you good content daily. See you in the next video.